Hot hatches are fun. They're compact and bijou, but their price isn't necessarily so, especially this, the Seat Ibiza Cupra R. OK, it's one of only 200 being made, of which 75 are coming to the UK. Great news if you like to stand out from the crowd, as it's highly unlikely your neighbour will have one too. And although a slice of exclusivity usually does cost a bit more, a tenner short of 18 grand is a big pile of pesetas. This Ibiza is the first Seat to carry the R for racing tag, and it has all the bits to excite the lads and ladettes. 16-inch OZ alloys partly hide big vented discs, so stopping shouldn't be a problem. The track's been widened, the whole car sits lower than normal, and the suspension's been stiffened to boost handling. The Ibiza is starting to look a little old now. A facelift in 1999 saw it gain a corporate Seat front nose and a lovely boot handle, but it's not the freshest looking hatch on the block. Inside, these half-leather grippy seats and the bright dials do improve matters, and there are plenty of goodies in here. Four airbags, air conditioning, electric windows, and these lovely red seat belts, which have obviously come from the MG Metro. And these were one of the main reasons why I bought my Metro back in the late 80s. I'm so sad. This Cooper R is a lot more polished than the MG though, and a lot more powerful. A grand total of 180 brake horsepower, combined with a turbo, gives this car a 0-62 time of 7.2 seconds and a top speed of 140. The engine revs fiercely and freely all the way to the red line, but be careful if you hit the gas too soon from the off, because there'll be an awful lot of torque steer. Cue traction control. It lacks the cornering poise of some of its contemporaries, but decent handling and a firm ride ensures that you don't get to your destination relaxed. However, at £5,000 more than the current hottest Ibiza, the Cupra, you can't help feeling you're being robbed. Which makes the revamped Renault Sport Clio look like a right good deal at £15,495. It's got a new front and rear, lower profile tyres and bigger 16 inch alloys. That's just about it on the exterior, apart from the fact that the Clio now has Xenon headlamps as standard. Great for driving at night, but not so great if you smash one. They cost 200 quid. The engine remains as before, a 2-litre, 16-valve, normally aspirated, 172 brake horsepower unit that's as eager as a beaver. Accelerate hard and you'll get to 62 miles an hour a fraction sooner than you would in the Seat. The front tyres don't scrabble around quite so much for grip either. A rorty exhaust tone accompanies the smooth power delivery and you will have lots of fun once you head out of the city. Great grip and a well-balanced chassis make sure of it. And in true hot hatch style, this one isn't fitted with that driver aid known as traction control. The whole dash has been given a mature makeover, but I just wish that they'd have kept the old suede-like steering wheel. This one is far too cumbersome. The front screen has been vibration damped to increase acoustic comfort. Um, that's noise reduction to you and I. It's also got a multi-stack CD stereo with steering column controls, automatic climate control, automatic wipers, automatic headlamps. <laughs> Can't it drive itself? Uh, no. You'll want to do all that yourself because this is where the Clio excels. Not only has Renault delivered another fun package here, they've also given it a tempting price, which is a whopping two and a half grand cheaper than the Seat. The Renault is superior to the Seat in many ways, and with all that cash you've saved, you could spend the rest of the year in the real Ibiza.